Hello, boys and girls. It is awesome to see you here today. Now, we've been looking in the first four books of the Bible for the last few months, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, each of these books of the Bible is written by a different friend of Jesus who closely watched his ministry on earth. Each of these guys, they wrote down what they saw. Now, if you read these books, you're gonna find that all of them share a lot of the same stories with each other. These true stories teach us more about who Jesus is, what he taught, and how he lived. Now, the story that we're gonna hear today is one that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all told about in their writing. If all of them wrote about it, we know that has to be a pretty big deal, huh? So last week we heard the story of Jesus calming a storm. Jesus and his disciples had gotten into a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee to get away from all the crowds of people that were following Jesus. But guess what? The people still kept following and they met them on the other side. But Jesus wasn't upset. Instead, he continued teaching until the disciples could feel their stomachs rumbling. Everyone was getting hungry. There were thousands of people gathered. And it wasn't like one of the disciples had a Stater Brothers nearby. Let's watch and see what happened. Jesus' disciples had been hard at work. They had been healing people and teaching them. So many people came and went that the disciples did not even have time to eat. So Jesus said to them, come with me. Let's go to a quiet place where we can be alone and get some rest. Jesus and his disciples got into a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee, but many people saw them leaving. The people traveled by foot and they ran ahead of Jesus. When Jesus and his disciples got to the shore, the people were already there waiting for them. Jesus saw the crowd and he cared about them because they were like sheep who needed a shepherd. So Jesus taught the people many things about God's kingdom, and he healed people who were sick. By this time, it was late in the day. Jesus' disciples came to him and said, we are out in the middle of nowhere and it's getting late. Tell the people to go away so they can go to the farms and villages to buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Jesus' disciples were confused. We can't feed this many people, they said. It would cost a whole year's pay to buy enough bread for them to eat, Philip said. Jesus asked, how many loaves of bread do you have? Go look. Jesus' disciple Andrew said, a boy here has five loaves and two fish, but what good will that do for so many people? Jesus told the disciples to instruct everyone to sit down. So all the people sat down in big groups on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and then he blessed the bread. He broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples. He also divided up the fish. The disciples passed out the food to the people and everyone ate until they were full. Then Jesus told the disciples to collect any leftover food. The disciples collected 12 baskets full of pieces of bread and fish. Jesus fed about 5,000 men that day, plus women and children. By feeding the 5,000, Jesus provided for the physical needs of the crowd. The next day, Jesus called himself the bread of life. Only Jesus is able to satisfy our souls forever by providing forgiveness, peace with God, and eternal life. Welcome back. You know, I love this Bible story because it reminds me that God always takes care of us. God can and will provide for our needs. These people were really hungry and Jesus miraculously fed them five loaves and two fish and they were really excited about it. And that's great, but the point of the miracle wasn't that Jesus just wanted to impress everyone or even just feed them. Remember that a miracle always points to something bigger. Remember that we all sin. We all do things that are wrong and sin causes us to be separated from God. And the Bible is really, really clear. The punishment of sin is a big one. It's death. 
However, Jesus gives us what we need the most, a way for us to be close to God again. He took the punishment for our sin when he died on the cross. Now by feeding the 5,000 people, Jesus provided bread for their hungry stomachs. The next day after Jesus taught the same crowd of people, he called himself the bread of life. Only he would be able to satisfy our hungry souls by providing forgiveness, peace with God, and eternal life. Now boys and girls, it's time for our Oikos Challenge with Haley this morning. Hey boys and girls, it's Oikos Challenge time. This is the part of our morning where we talk about our Bible story and how we can take what we've learned today and love our family and friends more and more every day. Today, we learn how Jesus took some bread and fish and used just a little bit to miraculously feed an entire crowd of people. That was really amazing. While you and I can't do a miracle like that, we can share food with the people that we love. This week, your Oikos challenge is to give a treat to someone in your Oikos. You might need your mom or dad or grandma to help, but bake some cookies, share a meal, or make a special treat for someone to show that you care. Who are you going to bless in your Oikos this week? Think about it and talk to your parents after our Bible story today. Now let's pray together before we head into our small group time. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the day that you have given us. I hope that this week we can find somewhere in our hearts to show a little bit of extra love to someone and share a meal with them, just like you did with the crowd of people. It's in your name we pray, amen. See you next week.